On this episode, we appreciate math. Ridiculously high amount of numbers. We lower our expectations. We don't get an error. Great. And we practice eye contact and stay hydrated. It just works. Mmm. Hi, this is Christian and this is Lasers Academy. And it is episode 20 of our advanced shmup tutorial. Today we are gonna load our cow shmup. And as I said in the last episode, we are on the precipice of a incredible new system. Ta-da! Um, we are gonna be, today we're gonna establish a system to use our sprite sheet more efficiently. Right now we're using our sprite sheet widely inefficiently. And this is something that a lot of people <laughs> previously already remarked on. All right, so let's start at the beginning. So we want to, we realized that our ship, our, or, or I always say ship, but I, when I say ship, I mean the jet. Uh, the jet is always symmetrical, almost symmetrical. Let's just assume it's symmetrical for now. And let's deal with the rest later. And also when it's banking, um, it's kind of like also like mirrored reflections. Like if it's banking left, it's the same thing as if it's banking right, almost. So we can just like cut the, our use of the sprite sheets, of the sprites for the spaceship by half, if we just gonna, you know, mirror the sprites somehow, use mirroring to get more use out of our sprite sheet space. And that's something I want to start uh, setting up immediately. All right, so let us start. So this is the, our first sprite here. I'm gonna copy it over. I'm gonna start a new sprite sheet over here. This, all this stuff here, all this stuff is superfluous now. This, is, this was just our testing stuff. We don't need that anymore. We have grown past this. We can, we can make this go away. This is good. All right, and then I'm gonna paste our sprite in here, right? I'm gonna paste it in here. Now I want to do some tweaking here. First of all, you can see that, did you see that we're actually already not using our spreadsheet quite efficiently, right? There is just like black in here, right? These two rows are just black. So we can be a, a bit more efficient by just nudging everything a little bit to the side. I'm using the cursor keys. The cursor keys allow you to kind of like move the pixels in the selected area around and they will loop, or, uh, loop around. But while I'm here already, I also already have to start thinking about some other things. You remember maybe, if you run this, you remember how we said that it's kind of nice if the ship, if the jet has a um, blue outline on the outside because that kind of helps. In the blue water, that doesn't make a difference. It's kind of like, it looks nice. It's nice and crisp against the blue water. But now when we get to the, or to the forest area, especially over the forest, uh, we see that the ship kind of like blends with the background. That's because the forest uses a lot of this dark blue color that is also used for the dark outlines on our spaceship, on our jet. And now the jet is kind of like no longer popping off from the background. We want to increase the readability of that sprite. And one technique that we found is to create like a, a light blue outline around the sprite. That's kind of like an easy way to do this. It's a bit of a hack, but, but it does do the job. Um, now we could draw this outline using code. That's absolutely valid and, and normal, but um, I'm worried <laughs> that we're gonna run out of CPU. I'm worried that because drawing the outline using code, that means we're gonna draw the sprite four more times. So instead of drawing a sprite once, we would have to draw the sprite five times. And uh, yeah, that will just, I'm worried. I'm worried that this will bog down the CPU. So I decided I, I, we're gonna go the hard way and we're gonna add the outlines to the actual sprite. This also means that we are kind of like cutting into our sprite space, but maybe through our techniques that we apply today, maybe we're gonna come out on top, come out on top enough to compensate. Um, if we find that we really need an even more sprite uh, space, we can always try to do 
the uh, you know the CPU heavy route. But for now, let me add in the outlines manually. Uh, like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a nice, uh, nice outline. Now let us uh, do the same technique with the second sprite here. Just copy it over. Uh, 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 paste it in here. Paste it in here. Like this. Um, let's, just, uh, let's go like this. Uh, Oh no, see, I now I cannot move this anymore. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so what if what if I if what if I just select this? Can I just like yeah, I can I can do that. So here I thought maybe we're gonna actually merge, we're gonna be like really see how this blue, like I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. This blue, these blue pixels, they're actually the outline of the left sprite what we can like reuse them as the outline of the right sprite here, right? This is kind of like the same th three pixels that we are using here. And and we just kind of like making the sprites overlap a little bit. That's the kind of, that's the kind of sprite specking, uh, sprite specking, sprite packing uh, that we're gonna, we're gonna apply here. Okay, okay, okay. Good. So we have two sprites. Now comes the the real trick. The real the real trick here. The real trick is that we're going to just use two. Oh, let me see. We're going to use half of this sprite. I always click on the wrong thing. I always click on the wrong thing. Uh, like this. And then let me zoom in a little bit. And we're going to select this bad boy. Select this bad boy. And we're gonna use the same technique here. We're gonna let the the outlines overlap, uh, just to get us just a little bit more of an advantage. Um, we are losing the advantage because we are hard coding, so to speak, the outlines. But um, if we do, then at least we can get it back a little bit like this. And so the idea here was, the idea here was that that uh, we're gonna use, just use half of this bad guy, bad guy. The idea is that we're gonna use just half of the sprite and we're just gonna mirror the second half. And that condenses, you know, all this huge line into this very small and compact line. And that's even more compact because look, there's like spacing in between the sprites here, the, the those black spaces that we just were able to like, squish together. Nice. Okay, so now we establish a system that allows us to draw these things. Okay, so let us, let us, hmm, this is gonna be tricky, right? Um, let us go to where we're drawing the ship spread. This is where we're drawing the ship spread. I'm gonna comment this out. And I'm gonna do the SSPR function. The SSPR function, let me look this up. The SSPR function is in most ways, in, in pretty much every way, more capable than the SPR function, which seems like, why don't we just always use SSPR? Well, there is a, one disadvantage to the SSPR and that it has a metric ton of parameters that you need to supply to the SSPR function for it to work. So I'm gonna copy this one out and I am going to copy this into our code and we're gonna start filling in all those fields. And you're immediately gonna see the kind of like the problem of why we, we, have to, we have to come up with some other solution here. Right, so let us paste this in here, bam. So source X and source Y, it means SX and SY. Well, let us just draw a sprite and we're gonna, we're gonna look at this later on. So zero, zero, let's start at zero, zero. Now we need to have source width and source height. Uh, we need we know that the height is probably like because previously the height was 16 pixels, but now we added the outline, so now the height is I think 18 pixels. Um, we don't need that. Uh, source width is something I need to measure. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that's going to be a... wait zero and zero to the 14, so 15 pixels. So 15 pixels. Now destination X and destination Y, that's something that we can copy from our, uh, from our previous thing. That's just PX and PY, okay, PX, PY. Uh, now we can also establish a destination width and destination height. 
Um, the, the thing is, like, if we don't establish this, we need to we need to get to the flip part. If we don't establish this, we don't get to the flip part. I don't know. I wonder if you can just like omit it. Get, is that something that 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 you can do? So we can do do like a true here. Let's just try that. Right. Wait, I didn't do a px. Oh man, py, comma comma i. I broke everything. So something like this. Let's try that. Does that work? Ah, see, it doesn't work. That you need to plug in some numbers in here on the destination width and destination height. I'm just gonna plug the 15 and 18 once again, just so I can then say true. And that gives us our, our um, flipped our flipped ship, right? And if it's not true, if this, is, this thing is false, then the ship is flipped in the other direction. Okay, so we're drawing the sprite, but you already see the problem here, right? You already see the problem. When we were using SPR, when we were using SPR, uh, it was very easy to just say a number and it would just draw us that sprite of that number. And it was easy, it was finished, like just number, a single number. But now it's no longer a single number. Now it's like four numbers to define the sprite. That's too many numbers. I was already stingy about numbers when it was just like maybe two numbers in the when we were drawing the the, the blobs. Uh, but four numbers is just ridiculously, ridiculously high amount of numbers. So what kind of system can we set up to make this a little bit better? Well, one easy solution is to do something like let's call this my SPR. We're gonna create an array and that array will contain all the information that we're just gonna dump into the SPR function. And this will allow us to just say like, just draw me the sprite from that array, from this entry from that array. And you know, our Pico8 will look up the, the data, will dump the data into the SPR function and will just draw the sprite like this. This allows us to draw sprites as easily as we were able to draw them before, just by supplying a single number and let this kind of library, the system, uh, take care of you know, managing the, all the information about how big a sprite is and where exactly it's located on the sprite sheet. It's kind of like we're outsourcing all the numbers into, into like a library of, of, of sprites. So in this case, we would something like zero, zero, that was like the, um, uh, that was these numbers, zero, zero, then 15 and 18, right? That's the width and the height, right? Something like this. And I don't know if we did this before, but this is like a two dimensional array. So this is an array that's inside an array and you can have multiple arrays inside an array. That's fine. Uh, and then we can add a second, we can add a second entry into this. Um, I'm just gonna just make a duplicate for now. For now, I just wanna establish the other code that, that belongs to this, this thing. So um, I'm gonna go into this tool thing and I'm gonna uh, say a function called MSPR. And then we're gonna go X and Y. Oh, S, X, Y. Sprite, X position, Y position. That's it. Let's do S, Y, S, X, S, S, mm. S, I, sprite index, maybe something like this. I just want the variables to be, I, I, I'm always a bit worried about using just X and Y, or maybe I should, ah, I don't know. Let's just keep it around like this. Now, um, here we can just use the SS SPR, SSPR function that's as we did previously, but we are now just gonna like copy and paste it in here. And we're just gonna plug in the values. Well, we're not gonna plug in the values. We're first gonna grab the entry from our uh, my SPR library array thing, right? So we're gonna go local, um, um, ms equals, uh, my SPR square brackets SI, right? We are taking this SI value, the number of the sprite we are about to draw, and we're grabbing the array that contains all the information that we need to draw it. And then we then go MS, oops, mobile suit 
1 for uh, the x position, ms2 for the y position, ms3 for width, ms4 for height, and then here we can do ms3 and 4 again. And then instead of px, we're going to go sx, sy, and then false. Um, let's think about the false thing in a second. For now, let's just like let's just see if we can just use this like the way we think we can. And then instead of the sh this whole big big line, we can just do ms pr one px py. This is the important part that we can use it so simply, right? Let's run this, and it works. It just works. And you can see we can also um, we also have the outline perfect perfect perfect. All right, so let us maybe put in other uh, data from this from uh, from our spreadsheet in here right away, so we can test it if it works with different values as well. Just like to 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 test it. <laughs> uh, so we have um, fourteen and zero. Let's put it the next one in here. So this one's going to be 14 and zero. That's going to be a top left corner of that that sprite. And the width, well, I, it never says you width. It should say width. It would be nice if it said width. Um, but anyway, so it's um, 14 until 29. So I guess 15, also 15. This, yeah, it seems like it's also 15. Okay. Um, let's just see if that works. So MSPR2. Something I don't like, and you can immediately tell that, oh, maybe that's something that we're gonna actually want in the future, is I kind of want to sometimes start on the forest area already. Uh, so it would be nice, for example, if on the start screen we had like different checkpoints at which we can start the game. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna scroll, set, set, start a scroll 200. Oops, that didn't work. Ooh, maybe that didn't work. Maybe that's too much. Why didn't that work? Uh, let's go 10. 10 worked. 100? 100 didn't work. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's something that we need to fix. That seems to be some kind of bug. Uh, I'm going to put it to the uh, scroll teleport. Bug. Uh, for now, for now, we're gonna have to just wait. I think 64 worked, right? Oh, 64 didn't work. So it what the problem is that when it turns 64, that's already good. That's already good. But this is not the thing I'm gonna. I I have an inkling on what the problem is, and you can find it out yourself maybe in in the doggy zone. For now, I'm just gonna wait. Actually, why even wait? We can. We can simply, we can simply change the color of this. We can simply change the color of this. There we go. So we can see uh, the width of the sprite wasn't quite correct. We can we have to we have to compensate. It's a bit of a wider sprite, so this sprite has a width of sixteen. There we go. You can see also that the jets are not no longer where they're supposed to be. That's because this sprite is now a bit taller because of the outlines. And we're going to address this right away. But um, now when we're thinking about, we have like all these, we have all these beautiful numbers in here that we can use to control what kind of sprite we're drawing. Like we can draw the sprite in a certain way. What other parameters would be useful for our system so we can control how we draw the sprite. And I know we want to control also the mirroring, but before we do the mirroring, there's actually something that I actually really wanted to do. And that is, it would be nice to be able to control where the center of the sprite is. That's something we haven't been able to do until now. Uh, for until now, you know, the center of the sprite was always the top left corner, and that's always that's always just a little bit awkward, doesn't isn't it? Like it's just like it's just not not great that the center of the sprite is here in top left corner, because that's kind of like completely not where visually the sprite is, right? The sprite center is somewhere, in this case, the sprite center is somewhere here, right? Maybe, or, or here, right? Here is the sprite center, and not there in the corner, losing its religion. So, 
um, maybe we can like create a system where we can offset the sprite. This comes in handy, like when I was creating the prototypes, this, I had that, I ran into the problems and you, you saw me running into those problems. Yeah, remember when I did the X scroll and then I was fumbling with the math here and I kind of like had to nudge things around. That's because, you know, when the ship is in the center of the screen, it's not actually in the center of the screen. Like if, if it's at 64, the position 64, which should be the center of the screen, what actually is in the center of the screen is the top left corner, which means the ship is slightly offset from the center. And then if the ship is you know, at position zero, then it touches the left edge. But if it's at position 128, it's actually off the screen. Another problem, uh, another situation where this also comes into, in, into play is when we're um, shooting things where we have to place the shots around the ship. Um, you have to all, always calculate out the fact that the center is actually at the top left corner. You see how the one of the shots is just at the position of the ship at PX, but the other one is at PX plus eight. These shots should be, you know, left and right, right? So they should be minus four and plus four, something like that, right? Um, so I want to now, um, just to, to do the testing, I'm gonna do a P set that's setting a single pixel at PX, PY, eight. Uh, I want to draw a single red pixel. That's this, that is where our ship is. This is the center of our ship. And what I want to do now is when I want to add, I want to create an offset that allows us to move the actual pixel of the sprite um, to the left and up. So it's more centered around that red pixel. So I'm thinking I'm adding something like here, up here in the data of, the, of, of my sprite. I'm just adding something like eight, eight. 8, 8, that's going to be the offset. And then when I'm drawing in the tools section, when I'm drawing, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, this, is the, this is the, no wait, this is not here, um, SX and SY, that's where we're drawing things. We're just going to do minus MS5 and minus MS6. So we're taking the fifth and sixth entry in our, in our library of sprites and we're using it to move the sprite around relative to where it's supposed to be. Now you can see, and now we can see that our the center of our sprite is more centered. Now we have to kind of decide where exactly we want our center to be. Um, let me just like set this at six and this one at seven. I think that that felt right to me. So now uh, you see, yeah, that seems like centered to me. Now the problem that we have here, and we have to—I'm I, I, not sure if I discussed this—but the problem we had here is we created sprites that don't don't have a center pixel, right? There is no single pixel that is the center of our sprite, because our sprites, if you look at them, our sprites are, have an even number of pixels, right? This is 16 pixels in width, so there is no center. It's not like this is not in the center, but the next pixel isn't in the center uh, in the center either, right? This pixel is all not also in the center. This is not in the center, just like it's it's a four, a two by two pixel block that is the center of the sprite. So we just have to pick one pixel from uh, from that to be our center, and I think this is fine. Um, right. Oh, something I haven't checked is oh yeah, I'm this is this is sprite number one, this is sprite number two, that's good. Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna tweak this around as we animate the ship because that's also one of the reasons why we want the offset. Um, if we are, if we have like blank space, like here, you know, when we had blank space, we had like these two lines of blank space, right? If we have this blank space, then sometimes when you have an animation, this, the, the sprite will start jiggling around uh, because the different frames are kind of like not perfectly aligned. If you start cropping out this empty space and this offset thing allows us to kind of like align the animation so that the different frames of the animation kind of like perfectly align with each other. Trust me, the offset thing is a very, very useful thing to have. Okay, but finally, let us talk a little bit about the, the thing that we are actually here for, and that is like the ability to mirror things, right? Um, so we presumably want to have duplicates of those sprites on the other side of the, of the animation, where they will be mirrored, right? And so in order to do that, we're just gonna copy this out. We're not gonna worry about the center sprite just yet. I'm gonna uh, enter the data for the center sprite. 
but this is kind of like a different type of mirroring than when we're just mirroring the entire sprite. So bear with me here. With the center sprite, uh, let us grab me the date of the center sprite. So that was 29, zero. Um, 29, zero, and the width is probably gonna be, err, so it's eight, uh, it's gonna be nine and then 18, I guess. And the offset, I'm not sure what the offset is. Just type in seven, eight, and I'm just gonna see what, what, what happens. Uh, let's try to draw this sprite. So that's gonna be sprite number three. Oh my god. You always have to remember to put a comma after each line when you define a multi-dimensional array like this. Okay. Uh, the offset is not quite right. Let me fix the offset. Uh, no, no, no. Like eight. Yeah, that seems right. Okay. So now we see that we only have half of a ship. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna deal with that in a second. But for now, uh, what I'm more interested in is sprite number four. This should be the ship, but, but like flipped in the other direction. So now I want to flip that entire sprite. So it's gonna be a copy of the same pixel data um, in our library, but we want to draw it other way around. So we need to kind of like create like another uh, data in this database, like another column that tells our sprite system whether we want to draw this normally or flipped. Um, so let us just do something like, like just let's just say like the one that means it's flipped. Like a one in the seventh, in the seventh column, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If there is a one in the seventh entry, then I want to draw the sprite flipped. And then we can just go in here. Here's where we're controlling whether the sprite is flipped or not. And we're just gonna go MS uh, seven equals, double equals one. So if the entry number seven in our array, if that's one, then this will be true. Otherwise this will be false. I wonder if this works. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I was worried because sometimes, oh yeah, see, sometimes the sprites don't have anything in the seventh, like there's a nil in the seventh. Like for example, for this first one, it doesn't have a seventh entry. So I wonder what happens if I, if I try to draw that, will, will we get an error? We don't get an error, great. <laughs> it just works. Right, right, right. So see, see what we just did, we created a system that allow, allows us to use the same kind of ideas that we had previously. So you, see, you see how we had like ship R and a bunch of numbers to, to control the animation of the banking animation of the ship? Well, we can just repeat this, but now the numbers are simpler. One, two, three, four, five, right? Right? So it's such the same numbers, like the same approach here, basically. And then we can just get this one out, this code out that we had previously. And then we're gonna paste it in here. Boop. And then we have our banking ship. Great. There is a, the offset on the, on the left one is not good. We need to fix the offset on the, on the, on the left one. Let us, let us, let us fix the offsets. MSPR. Uh, for PXPY, I want to see that. Yeah, that, that offset doesn't look right. And that one. Yeah, that offset definitely doesn't look right. Uh, so let's just fix this real quick. Um, uh, I think this is just nine and 10. Is that is that how it works? Nope. You probably can already notice that working with a system is kind of inconvenient because we kind of like, it would be nice if we can just like step through the different, like the, the library of our sprites and see if this, if this looks right. And then just always having to fumble around with some code is kind of inconvenient. This is already a teaser for something that comes in the future. Uh, but yeah, I think this looks now, this, this now looks good. Uh, oh, there is no sixth sprite. And uh, let me just comment this out and bring this back again. Okay, good. Now you see that we still have a big of a problem and that is that center sprite. That is kind of like works differently. But that's something that 
comes up in the doggy zone. Yes, 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 the doggy zone. So you probably know where this is all heading. I want you to complete the system. I want you to complete what we started. I want you to add the ability to mirror sprites. So not just like flip the entire sprite, but to copy the sprite. First task for the doggy zone. The second task for the doggy zone, and that is gonna be, how do we solve the problem with the mirroring, right? How do we solve the problem that our um, sprites are not perfectly, they're not perfectly symmetrical. Symmetrical sprites would look like this, but this is not what we have. We have a slightly different sprite. So how are we going to solve this? This is the second task for the doggy zone. And the third task for the doggy zone is going to be fixing this scroll terror port. What, why does, is there a bug when you start the game with scroll 64? I don't quite understand. And now let me move over to the part where I talk about the beautiful people, the wonderful people who are supporting this show on Coffee. Thank you so much to everybody who supports this show. Uh, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazydevs. And one of the big advantages is that you get to see new episodes earlier before they are being released on YouTube. Now, another thing I want to do in this, uh, something, I want to do something new in this, in this supporter corner, which is to actually feature a work of one of my supporters. So Hannes Roots um, recently sent me this beautiful game. Uh, this is Red Baron. He was a bit late to the, uh, you know, basic shmup showcase, uh, but he posted this beautiful game that he made. And I, I just really love this. Like I really love, especially the, the beautiful sprites that he created here. Um, the, there's a really, really nice, beautiful sprite of the boss that it has like some recall when they shoot. This is really, really great. The only thing that I'm a bit worried about is that the, uh, the laser fire, the, the laser that the player is shooting is a little bit too small. I would prefer it to be a bit bigger, but otherwise a beautiful execution of the basic shmup tutorial. Thank you so much, Hannes. As always, links is going to be down in the doobly-doo. Yes, yes, yes. We are now in the middle of this uh, system. As I said, we are in the thick of it, of creating like this crazy system that will allow us to use our sprite sheets more efficiently. But there is one last twist that I saved up for the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.